Uh, today we're talking about satisfying gunplay. What I mean with that is um, games in which gunplay exists in one way or another um, feeling very good. Now, that's not super specific, right? Because something feeling very good is very different for very many people. Um, however, there is a baseline we can achieve uh, uh, in every game based on some tried and proven methods and techniques uh, that I think everyone should know about. And I think most people, especially uh, starting out game developers, whether that's AAA or, or indie, um, won't actively think about when they're playing, you know, shooters of any kind or any game with a with gunplay in it. So that's what we're going to look at today. Specifically, we're going to look at uh, audiovisual feedback, right? So anything from uh, hit markers and hit marker sounds to VFX to anything kind of like in that range. Um, we're going to look at impact, which is the feeling you get when you, you know, get the kill, so to say. Um, and we're going to look at controls. Uh, specifically, we're going to definitely look at Overwatch 2 and Evil West to kind of like hit some of these points. And I hope that we can also look at Call of Duty Black Ops 2, uh, mainly because it's an older game uh, released in 2012, I want to say. Something like that. I'm, I'm not entirely uh, certain when it was released, but uh, a long time ago to show you guys that not only is uh, or are these techniques being used now in video games, but also uh, they are being used back then as well. So obviously this is tried and proven and you know built upon further. So I'm gonna press a button, specifically that one. Uh, oops, which is the wrong screen. Sorry. Hang on two seconds. Uh, as I uh, where is the properties? It has to be. Uh, oh no! Wait, hang on. That's not it. Uh, where is the? Wait, where's the actual? Am I an idiot? Where is it? Oh, screen capture. Yeah, I am an idiot. Okay. Uh, other screen. There we go. All right. Very good. Um, all right. So Overwatch Two. It's a free to play team based shooter uh, or hero team based shooter. Um, and uh, Overwatch 1 has been around since 2016 and uh, has seen great success. Overwatch 2, not so much, but still there are things to learn from games that aren't doing so well because the gameplay is not the problem when it comes to Overwatch 2 or Overwatch in general. So let's have a look. Um, specifically, I'll enter the, the uh, training range in a second, uh, the practice range, and we'll uh, check out a few heroes as well as uh, training practice range, uh, as well as talk about some very specific things that we'll uh, be diving into. Uh, just let me know if the sound of Overwatch is too loud or not, as I'm not entirely sure, as I'm obviously not usually uh, uh, streaming games like this. All right, let's take a look at Tracer specifically. So, um, let us start with some of the very, very basics, right? So in the bottom right of the screen, you can see an ammo counter, right? The ammo counter for this particular character is um, not double-sided actually, because both of these guns draw from the same ammo pool. So if I just were to uh, shoot them all empty, there you go, uh, counts down to zero and refreshes upon reloading back to 40 again. Now, you might've already seen some things just now as I did that, right? So let's, let's analyze it again. Let's put it here. Uh, I wish I could put the game to a slower mode, but I can't because I'm obviously not a developer. But um, if I left click to fire, there's a few things that are going to happen. First off, we see these little effects that happen, right? We see the little fee effects at the barrels of the gun. We see the, uh, if I just do them a little bit more, we see these bullet impact holes right here, but not only that, we see also that when we hit a surface, there's a little blue dot there. I'm hoping it comes across in the in the feed as well. Um, and those three things together, we'll call them, uh, um, you know, bullet fee of X or something like that. Um, those three things together already create a sense of impact on your world, right? The world within which you're in, um, this already adds to it. Then there's sound, right? Now, I don't know how loud this exactly is on stream, but it's 
you know, it's a pretty futuristic, lasery kind of sound, kind of indicating that these are, you know, like energy bullets or like kinetic bullets or, you know, something of the kind, uh, whatever the lore might actually be. Um, so there is all of that, which really gives us a lot of indication and a lot of an idea of what this gun is like, right? It feels like a relatively, it's super fast firing, but it feels like a low damage gun, something that, you know, I'd have to use quite often or quite a lot of bullets from in order to, you know, get my kill. So immediately there is information there being shared with the player. The next thing that we could take a look at is the actual reticle itself. Now the reticle in, um, which is the little white circle with the extra dot in the middle, um, it's like your aiming point. Um, it can actually be changed inside of Overwatch. You can change it per hero and everything. Um, and I believe if I go into gameplay, no, it's uh, it's in one of these. Um, you can basically change it per hero. It's it's relatively impressive. You can make it bigger or smaller. You can change the way it looks, stuff like that. But it's basically it's a very basic UI element that you know tells you where you're going to shoot. Now, when it comes to actually shooting characters, there's a few things that we should pay attention to. So first off, when we actually hit something that is supposed to be hit, we see that the reticle becomes larger, right? The outer circle, we can see it become larger. We also see in the middle there, just around the little white dot, we see the actual hit marker, right? And we see it kind of like appear and then, you know, kind of shrink down and dissipate and, you know, kind of disappear again. It tells us we have hit something. Right? Something that a lot of games don't do, and this kind of frustrates me to, to no end, is that they have this worked in, right? They have the hit markers, they have the reticle kind of like expanding in size and stuff like that. But what they don't have is that when I shoot the head, you hear that? You can hear it and you can see it. Can you shoot the wall in between to see the difference? Uh, yeah, I can, yeah. So uh, the body shot, the wall shot. So we see that the reticle does increase in size because obviously there's a spread to the to the bullets, um, but we see the hit marker appearing when we actually hit the body, right? Now, when we uh, hit the head instead of the body, there's two things that that change, right? Based on that very basic feedback, two things that change. First off, we see that the hit marker doesn't actually shrink at the end of the hit, right? And instead it stays larger. And we see that it's now purple. Those are my chosen colors for the, the HUD. For enemies, it's purple. For uh, friendlies, it's yellow. Um, I think the default is red for enemies and blue for, for friendlies. Um, but we see in this case that the hit marker uh, becomes this purplish, uh, um, uh, larger icon to kind of indicate you're hitting something important. Now, not only that, we also see, because we, again, we don't see that here, uh, we also hear this little pinging sound. Something that we don't hear when we shoot the body or when we shoot the wall. Right, no, no pinging sound at all. But we do hear it when it's, once we shoot the head. Right, again, indicating, without ever explaining this, right, this is never explained in any tutorial. Um, never explaining to the player that shooting the head will be more effective than shooting the body, right? Um, so again, that is something that, in the case of Overwatch, and I'll switch to a different hero in a second to show it some more, something they've done in Overwatch that uh, um, uh, really kind of like intrinsically teaches the player shooting the head pays off, right? There's also this little, in my opinion, this little dop dopamine hit that happens when you hear that repeated dinging sound and you're like, yes, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something that is really effective, right? It's obviously encouraging. Exactly, additional dopamine sounds for headshots. Exactly, exactly. Um, so that's some of the, some of the already some of the basics for when it comes to basic gunplay. Now, we're gonna quickly switch to a different character to show off something else. Oh, where's my mouse? There it is. We're gonna switch to Soldier. Soldier only has one gun. Uh, much bigger gun, might I add. Um, and there's something, personally, I believe it's a really nice thing. If it's additional, I don't think it should be the only thing you have in terms of information, but I think it's a nice addition. So on the bottom right, we see the ammo counter again, right? 30 out of 30. On the gun itself, 
just there on the like the the heft or like the the back of the gun uh we see a little bar hang on it's being glared out of there we go being glared out of existence um where we see two things you won't see it yet but uh for one if i start shooting we see that the little progress bar there on the gun itself decreases and then it changes the color to orange meaning you know you're just under halfway of your clip all the way up to here we see the slight red uh, um, bar there where we know okay we're at the end of our clip and then it reloads and it recharges again the second thing which is a second ability for soldier um, which is the rockets with right click um, is that now it shows that your rockets are orange right the, the little element on the gun itself is orange and then when it recharges it becomes blue again to kind of indicate to you you know you have this ability again now this in-world UI combined with the actual on-screen UI is obviously a great way to kind of give the player the ability to get used to whichever form they like um, but ultimately is a really nice way in my opinion to create something that's very coherent and it doesn't work for everything right there's going to be guns on which it doesn't work but on this particular gun it does work there is something else I want to show off about soldier's gun uh, something in comparison to uh, Tracer's guns, the ones we just had. If we listen closely for a second. So there's two main differences. The sounds, obviously. Very different type of gun, much more heavy, much more, it seems like physical projectiles. He's not shooting laser beams, he's shooting something physical. Um, and the recoil, right? If I hold left click, and I don't move my mouse, you know, my mouse gets moved up for me. Now, that's pretty standard. Recoil is pretty standard. If you don't know about recoil and gunplay, then, you know, that's the very basic level of, you know, kind of creating a trade-off between continued fire, right, holding down the button, uh, and being able to, you know, hit your target. When it comes to recoil, you can always steer against, so if I start shooting, I can kind of, like, keep my mouse, kind of, like, drag it back to try and keep it in place in order to you know, uh, uh, hit something. But something that you might have not noticed um, is that when I do, uh, when I don't compensate for the recoil, right, and I hold down the button to empty my entire clip, watch what happens right at the end. So my gun goes up, 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 my clip empties, and my gun repositions itself, or my camera view repositions itself back to where I started. Right, you can even see that the, the first bullet hole is still there. Right, if I do this again on a not tarnished piece of wall, this is where I'm going to shoot first, about a, sorry, like this, about a stripe of the crosshair away from uh, from those vents. And I'm going to continue, 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 continue. And there you go. I start right back at the start again. So even though there is recoil, the game developers, I must assume, because I obviously haven't talked to them, but I must assume that they thought to themselves at some point, maybe as part of accessibility, or maybe as part of uh, making the game easier to play, not in a sense of accessibility, but more in a sense of just, you know, easy to learn, they thought to themselves, okay, recoil added is great. Uh, does it reset if you stop mid-clip? That's a good question. It does. It does. That's a very good question. Um... They thought to themselves at some point, the recoil is great. It adds that short-term trade-off between being able to hit something and, you know, not just being able to, you know, uh, uh, just hold left click and just aim wherever you want. Um, but still making sure that it's not some giant trade-off that kind of like continues on for the long run between multiple shooting attempts, essentially. So another one of those things that a lot of people don't take into account when they're making gunplay is these little things, these little considerations of how punishing should the recoil be right the same goes for the spread as well right if we look at spread uh on some of these let me see can i find a wall somewhere oh yeah it's a good wall um if i look at spread on this we see oh that was not a full clip hang on we see some bobbing back and forth between left and right but it's a relatively straight line right besides the recoil so there's not a lot of spread right if I just do that again, we see again, we see some bobbing and, and weaving kind of left to right, but, you know, beyond that, it's not very much. If we look at a character like Tracer again, 
Uh, tracer there you are. Um, then we see, I have to aim a little bit lower because it's going to be easier to see that way. We see that within that circle of the crosshair, we see that the bullets kind of land in that. And if we make it super short bursts, then we stay relatively accurate. If we go really long and we empty out the entire clip, then it kind of like spreads out throughout the entire circle, basically. So again, it's a change between guns that you know adds to uh, being able to learn how those guns work. Uh, the reset after recoil might be for controller players. Mouse and keyboard users might not need it so much. Maybe, but that is definitely a consideration to, to make, right? Like making the consideration in the first place, whether or not you're gonna do something like that for console players and or for PC players, mouse and keyboard players, um, is already a great start, right? Uh, definitely having that step in your thinking is already a really great start. Um, now, just thinking, there's one more thing that we can look at. Um, there's probably a few more things we could look at, but you know, I'm trying not to make it too long. There's obviously also snipers, uh, and those snipers can also rapid fire. Um, and if we just do that, we see, you know, I've picked a slightly different type of uh, crosshair for this one. We see the spread is definitely there. We see quite a lot of smoke coming off the wall, right? Actually, that's a, another great, uh, whoopsie, whoopsie. That's another great example. So if we shoot here, there's quite a lot of smoke. It's almost covering all of the bullet holes, right? Whereas if I just, there we go. If I just switch back to, uh, uh, not May, to Tracer and do the same thing on this wall, it doesn't nearly as much kind of like blind out the, uh, um, or like hide the bullet holes, right? So it's another one of those things that they've thought about for every gun to kind of make them feel different um, to make sure, you know, uh, these bullets hit differently and create different types of dust. Now, uh, with sniper rifles, there's a few things. Uh, the body shots have a pretty large crosshair, uh, not crosshair, hit marker, right? Um, and that's kind of it. And if we do this on an empty wall, we see that some sparks flying off, really indicating this really like high caliber impact, so to say. Now, one of the things that they've done here, because you can shoot at lesser powers as well, you can shoot, for example, 30% power, it does less damage, but it's a faster shot. If you were to all the way charge up your shot, you see this little icon appear right around your crosshair. So it's right at the player view, because you're always gonna be looking at where your crosshair is, because that's where you're trying to shoot. Um, and it's gonna tell you, hey, your gun is fully charged, right? So you don't actually have to look at the power percentages there. You can just wait until you see the little white and yellow uh, diamond that appears, right? The little uh, tilted square shape. Um, another one of those things that they did to make the information, the key information you need in order to play this game uh, really easily digestible, right? Which ultimately makes for really satisfying gameplay because if I see my target, right? And I want to shoot and I'm like, oh, is it 100%? Oh, it wasn't 100%. Right? Oh, hang on. Um, whereas if I... Uh, hang on. If I shoot this guy and like... Oh, you know? Um, there's the immediate connection between the, the white and yellow diamond shape. And then knowing my gun is 100%, meaning it'll do full damage. And then shooting and subsequently killing my target. Right? So... Again, it's another one of these thoughts that they had of like, okay, how can we take this information and make it more easily readable, more easily digestible uh, uh, for our players, right? So uh, it's another one of those things. Now, the last thing, or one of the last things, uh, which is a pretty big concept that I think a lot of people kind of forget about from time to time, uh, where are you? Where do I um, is time to kill. Um, Generally speaking, time to kill, or usually shortened down to TTK, um, is for example for bigger characters that also look bigger and you know uh, have got that chunk on them, if you will. Um, they take quite a significant amount of time to kill. Right, I think we're roughly at four seconds. One, two, three, yeah, three, four, give or take. Right. Whereas 
if we go to let's see a tracer who also looks a lot smaller and it looks like it looks a lot more fragile we're talking a second maybe a little less right maybe just under a second um and so when we think about enemies which are obviously a big part of satisfying gunplay um we need to think about how much time does the player need to kill them now obviously let me let me call out here there's um an exception to be made right when you are making a game like let's say squad which is a a hyper realistic or a hyper modern uh shooter game squad based shooter game uh that really focuses on realism and and you know uh, uh, um, making all the guns work as realistically as possible and making kind of like simulating war in 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 a lot of ways um then you're bound to a lot more of the more realistic rules of how real life works um, and so a lot of these concepts kind of fall away not all of them i think the more basic ones like hit markers and having impact sounds and stuff like that i think that all still applies but time to kill is something hard to play with when it comes to the more realistic uh, um, uh, approaches mainly because even if you're wearing body armor um if you get shot four times in the face you know, uh, whether you look chunky or not, it's not going to matter, right? Whereas, you know, theoretically, if I compare Tracer here, who is wearing a visor, which is not attached anywhere, so I'm wondering how that stays on. She's wearing a visor, whether I shoot her in the head and then uh, switch to someone who's got armor. Um, 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 who's got an armored face? This guy's got an armored face. Look, he's wearing a whole, like, probably titanium carbon steel mask or whatever that deflects bullets. You know, uh, the time to kill is the same because they're both made out to be quick to kill enemies, right? Fragile enemies. So think about this when you're making your own uh, gunplay and your own enemies. How do they look and how does it affect their time to kill, right? I think that's a super, super important thing. Uh, also, this guy, look, this guy looks mega armored, right? And so subsequently... I was just able to kill him in one clip, right? But that's if he's standing still and I'm just able to, you know, kind of like unload on this guy, um, which is never really going to happen. So, um, But either way, it takes more time to kill him than it does to kill someone that looks more fragile. So that's another thing to really think about when you're making uh, making your enemies and when you're thinking about your gunplay. Um, just thinking if I've missed anything specifically. Um, we could talk about projectile versus hit scan based uh gunplay if that's if that's what we want to do is that something you guys are interested in because then i can i can do that it's not a problem but if if we say now nah, let's move on to the next thing then i'm more than happy to do so Um, if, yeah, move on. Awesome. All right. Um, then as a recap, there is, uh, a few things that make for, and this is largely about audio visual feedback. Um, uh, there's a few things that, that matter for it. For one impact effects, uh, based on what the gun is, plus the sounds are obviously a great starter. The next thing is the hit markers, right? Showcasing them around the, the uh, around the crosshair really, really helps. Then, for headshots, we need to make it feel more impactful because obviously in this case it's meant to feel impactful because you know the head will uh, uh, take more damage or it will be killed. Well, will kill the enemy quicker than shooting the body, right? So. Purple crosshair is larger. We hear the pinging sound. They, they've put effort into that. Then there's also, when it comes to different types of guns, which I won't show now because we just talked about it, uh, different amounts of, of dust, different amounts of like uh, uh, VFX and stuff like that to kind of give every gun its own feeling. Beyond that, potential on the gun or in-world UI to showcase important information, like for example the ammo counter or like the ability uh, uh, thing there for the rockets. Uh, and then lastly, there's time to kill. Um, yeah, yeah, there's time to kill, uh, which is, could be long if the enemy looks quite chunky, uh, which then still feels impactful, or it can be really quick, 
if the enemy also kind of like looks like that. That was almost half a second in which I killed that enemy. So, you know, those are some things to, to think about. Um, that's the first part. Audiovisual and a little bit of impact already, a little bit of, of uh, controls as well. Oh yeah, the, the recoil obviously resetting once you've emptied the clip, whether you do that halfway through or whether you do it once you have, hang on, once you have finished out an entire clip in your way up there, clip ends, and you get reset back to where you started. Uh, all kinds of considerations that I would suggest making. Uh, you don't have to apply all of them, let's be, let's be uh, real here, you don't have to apply all of them, but I do believe that if you've at least made the consideration, you'll either find out that applying these techniques will help your game become more readable and become more satisfying, or you'll find different techniques that you know equally will achieve the same thing, uh, um, but just might just be different things because you know, Overwatch is not some kind of holy mecca uh, for games or for gunplay, but it is a very good start. So, all right, that is Overwatch. Um, Overwatch out of the way, we look at not Black Ops yet. No, no, we're first gonna go to Evil West. There's an update queue. If only a gigabyte. Because Evil West, even though I haven't finished it yet, as soon as I played that game, it felt amazingly satisfying, right? The, the gunplay in this game felt incredible to me. Um, oh, it's a 15 gig update, nice. Um, the way that they execute the handling of the gun and the controls that kind of like go into it is, uh, uh, um, for me, of a level that I haven't recently seen in like the past few years. Um, I don't play every single first person shooter, but I play a few of them. So I'm relatively confident in saying, yeah, um, you know, this is very good. I also don't know why I have the Resident Evil 6 benchmark tool, but I don't actually have Resident Evil 6. So I don't know. Anyway, Evil West, uh, viewer warning, pretty gruesome combat. Uh, specifically, we'll be looking at the gunplay and not the actual like hand-to-hand -hand and uh, abilities and stuff like that. So, you know, we're not looking at everything for Evil West, but we're looking at quite a few things. God damn, it's hot in this room. Jesus. Man, I love Evil West. I need to finish that game at some point. Looks beautiful as well. All right. Um... So let me think, because I don't exactly want to, let's put this on, no, not evil, let's put this on a story. Uh, ba, 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 ba. There's assisted, yeah, let's do assisted. Um, and then we will say, okay. All right, I will skip all of the, the cutscenes and such, because obviously we're trying to, trying to get to a point where it's classy. Uh, Arctic's cards work as space heaters. They really do. They really, really do. This is a 3080 Ti. And it is... Blah. I don't even want to know what a 40, 4080 or a 4090 would have done to my room. It would have been hell in here. I mean, during the winter, it's nice. Because it's like, you know, it's cold outside, so I get some fresh air. But here at my desk, it's still nice and warm and cozy. It's great. Um, oof. That, that overglow. Anyway. Um, not that bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. Stuff just exploded. Alright, I just need to go through this little section here. Because uh, I can't skip this bit. But it's going to give me guns soon enough. Jump, buddy. Jump, Jesse. Alright, let's keep going. And let's run. And then I believe a little bit further down, it actually teaches us Let's how to shoot. Oops. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, it was like that. I kind of forgot how to play this game. Incredible. Yeah. Alright. This game's great. This game is lovely. Alright, I think I need to do this with the melee. Yeah. I mean, okay, so this is not exactly gunplay. But uh, that felt incredibly satisfying. So if you're if you're if you want to pull all this advice a little wider, you wanna 
talk about satisfying combat, every punch there, with the sound and with the way it looks, feels exactly how I imagine it would feel uh, when you're wearing some kind of like giant metallic glove and you're, you know, right hooking this zombie or like vampiric uh, kind of uh, mess. Um, and we're gonna do that again here, I believe. Yeah, with the, with the dodging thing. Um, like, if you listen to that, it feels... Oops, ouchie. It feels quite incredible. Uh, also with the amount of blood that kind of springs from it, the body parts that come out of it every here and there, uh, feels really, really good. Uh, I think there's a... Yeah, there's treasure here. Nice. We got 21 bucks. Uh, I should be I should be looking for treasure. Um, so all of that also really applies here. Uh, the little time stop effects on hits really sells it. Yeah, it really does. It really gives you that feeling of impact. Um, Alright, let's get third here. Alright, um, now one of the other things that you really notice, uh, which is at the end of combat. I'm gonna, um, you're gonna really, you're gonna really need to pay attention to it. But it's a right as soon as I defeat the last enemy, that's when it happens. There we go. Uh, so this is not the end of combat yet. Keep listening. Did you hear that just now? It was the sound of the last bullet being shot out of a revolver. Um, and then kind of like the, the shell casing kind of like dropping onto the floor. To me, I, I don't think I've ever seen any other game really do this, but I'd love to be corrected if, if some other game has done this. To me, the fact that the game is signaling when it's the end of combat, when I've defeated all of the baddies around, is really 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 fun right it's i think it really aids the player in uh, um um in avoiding a loss of time i suppose um you know never really having to worry oh is there still that one enemy left that i haven't seen yet right or, or that is hiding away somewhere that's bugged out or whatever uh instead i know when when combat has ended and that's just really really fun Uh, so yeah, that's really really nice. Is there more enemies? Yeah, there is. Off you go. There we go. All right. Uh, then I believe at the next section we're gonna we're gonna get our uh, our gun. I believe it's somewhere over here. Oh yeah. The cannibal punch is also really fun. Feels incredible. There we go. And one more enemy. Oh, nice. I bowling balled one through the other. Is that it? That was it. There you go. Um, Alright. Gun, please. It's here somewhere. No, that's the big guy. Gorgeous. Looks gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I could. Give me a gun, please. So I can show these lowly people who are here. Uh, what it's like to have really satisfying gunplay. Ouch. There we go. 
Come on. Die already. There you go. Beautiful. Beautiful. And you're dead. Are you not gonna give me a gun? You should have given me a gun by now. I'm pretty certain. Uh, pretty certain I was supposed to get a gun back there. Thanks, Jesse. Boom. There we go. Now we got a revolver. Okay. All right. Besides the fact that it looks beautiful. Um, well, then it's lit up, that is. There we go. Uh, there's a few things they've done inside of Evil West that make for incredibly satisfying gameplay. So for one, you can tap shoot, uh, which in this case is E, it's not left mouse button. Uh, you can tap shoot your revolver. Now, it has for one, the tracer bullet, right, where you see this little tracing effect, a little smoke trail that kind of like uh, um, goes where the bullet is going, right, to kind of give you some idea of where you were and how far off your target you are. Now, that's not the only thing you can do with this gun. You can also hold it. Hang on, just... There you go. Which shoots all six bullets very quickly, in like rapid succession. Uh, which creates also a really satisfying uh, um, sense of impact. Right, again, there's little time stops as well when you hit the bullets. Um... And it feels quite incredible. Now, these guys are not particularly very good examples for when it comes to when it comes to uh, showing off the gun mechanics, but it's incredibly satisfying. It does slightly slow your movement to kind of like showcase some impact there. There's some trade-off, right? You can't just randomly uh, uh, keep holding it and then hope that it works out. You still have to make that conscious choice. But again, it's another one of those considerations of, uh, uh, you know, how guns are supposed to work in this universe and in this game, and, and how you might want to do it in your game. Um, so consider that. Now, there's one more gun, the Winchester, which uh, I'm relatively certain I'll get right after this. As soon as I meet up with my pal. here which is slow <laughs> come on buddy there we go all right am I gonna get the Winchester here I believe I smell you, chat, you lousy skunk A lot of hidden loading screens here. There we go. Mind if I you? No, please do. Please make it quick. So all of this, all these little telegraphing moves, which shows you that the enemy is going to attack, really adds to the experience. Really adds to the um, how forgiving the game is in a lot of ways. Come on, let's start here. Throw another diamond, please. Uh, really bad at throwing those diamonds. Go. 
up. And just one more. There we go. Alright. Now. Do you want to give me that gun? Please tell me you're going to give me that gun. Definitely going to need it for this guy. I'm relatively sure I'm going to need it for this guy. Am I not? Then he was dead. All right, Chester. Now I'm pissed. Then let's get that son of a bitch. Okay. Uh, cutscene is fine. Doesn't really matter. Uh, I thought I was gonna get the Winchester sooner. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Okay, the Rancher rifle. Okay. Uh, now this gun works a little differently because this one you can actually aim and you know consider if you want to shoot it. It's your first real gun, I suppose. Now, this gun has a few specific things. So for one, you can see that you've got four bullets in this like little slight uh, curved element above your uh, crosshair. Your crosshair also appears and disappears whether you're aiming down the sights or not. Um, and there is a few other things that happen in a second. There's another thing here that basically, do you see that? If I do the headshot, the hit marker changes entirely uh, into this almost blood impact symbol. Um, so that's another thing that they've added here as well where the headshots count slightly different. Now we go into glowing weak spots. Now, those weak spots appear, and if you then were to aim down sights close by enough, the camera snaps to it. If I do it too far away, it still does it, right? It's, it's quite, it's quite uh, forgiving, to be fair. Um, oh, so that was really cool. Um, so it's, it's relatively forgiving, but it adds so much to the experience because you feel incredible, right? And, and that's, that's the key, right? Do you want your players to be to have to be really, really skilled in using the guns that you make, or do you want them to feel incredibly cool, right? And there's obviously there's a large area in between there that you can sit somewhere on, but you got to decide for yourself: is this a matter of skill, or is this a matter of just feeling absolutely awesome, right? Um, if it's a matter of skill, don't do the snapping. Right? Do all the rest, don't do the snapping. If it's a matter of feeling really, really cool, then think about really over-the-top VFX, think about really over-the-top uh, uh, sound effects, um, and then think about the snapping and kind of like making the guns easier to use, uh, like with the resetting of the recoil and stuff like that. Because uh, in a second we'll jump to Black Ops 2, uh, where, you know, uh, we'll look again at something different that's a bit more skill-focused. Um, because I believe that if I were to go in here... I think that moves me on to the next area, I think. Uh, yeah, it does. In which I can fight some more guys here. No, up here. Um, yeah, up here. Um, here we'll see it again. Like, there's this large open arena where we can fight. Can I skip this cutscene? I cannot. And we see already a sniper up there. Uh, which is kind of like indicated by this lens flare. Uh, okay. Um, but here as well. Did you see that? I destroyed that barrier plus that guy's head in one shot because my camera kind of snapped towards it and created this really satisfying sense of combat. Right? 
Oh shit, I wasn't really just... That's annoying. And it also punishes you for not hitting it, right? Um, and so in that sense, it's it's nicely balanced in my opinion. Um, but here, so as I repeat, here's another really nice thing uh, um, that people tend to like forget about. It's for one, it's the trail V effects, kind of like the smoke that follows the bullet. Um, that's for one, because it really helps with aiming and then resetting your aim and kind of like figuring out where you need to shoot next. Um, but also the quick snapping, which I can't show now because there's no enemies, but the quick snapping to, you know, critical weak spots or just your enemy in general uh, to make you look really, really cool. Um, and then there's also the, the more visceral nature of the VFX, the visceral nature of the sound effects that, again, really add to that feeling of cool and kind of like, you know, uh, um, focusing on the player experience more so than the the skill needed to control these guns um everything clear about that because if so i'm going to continue on to black ops 2 because so i'm looking at the time we've got the time like i had uh, about an hour and a half planned for this uh, we've only been streamed for an hour and we like did like 20 minutes of chatter at the start so um we'll uh we will um uh move on to black ops 2 to include another example if there's any questions in the meantime feel free to ask away all right, I specifically installed multiplayer because I can do uh, a couple of things there. Uh, it's been uh, a fat while since I uh, played this game. When did it come out on Steam? I'm not sure if it came on Steam directly, like immediately or not, but let's see. 2012, 12 of November 2012. Yeah, see, I knew it. I knew it. All right, it's running the install script for Microsoft Direct X. This is going to bring back some memories. 11 years ago. Jesus. How I've grown. <laughs> and how the world has moved on. Christ. Um, what do we think so far? Do we uh, think of any other uh, ideas or ways to make combat or make gunplay feel very satisfying? Or are we like, this is a, on a great track and, you know, uh, we're continuing this way? Because if so, that'd be great. And if not, then we'll include more, right? That's that's what we do here. We, uh, we make sure, what's it called? That we um, handle as much feedback and as much content as possible in the shortest amount of time. No fluffing our videos uh, or streams or whatever. Oh, oh. You guys, I don't know what you guys are seeing right now, but I am seeing... <laughs> oh god, hang on. Uh, give me a few seconds to fix the um, settings here. Because... Uh... Oh god, why is it at 800, 600? Crazy. Hang on. This is, by the way, terrible UI, might I add. Uh, this is having to click it rather than being able to just, you know, do it otherwise. Uh, Windowed full screen, field of view, let's make that 90. Uh, and the rest, yeah, let's do high shadows. Old game problems, yeah. Um, all right, let's apply that. Apply these settings, please. Okay, right. Okay, that already helps. Um, advanced stuff can be really high who cares extra <laughs> okay uh love the extra option uh the rest is all fine um and that's all fine apply yeah all right at least we're running at 1000 if it does it have an fps counter draw fps uh yes oh that's at 60 it should well it's because the, the ui is probably limited to 60 i reckon all right um now i believe we can do a custom game that uh, set up game edit Jesus Christ I forgot how all this works uh, okay no, I think I think no one can join this I don't think anyone would actually join us we can change the map to standard uh, where is it where's my world favorite map Nuketown 2025 um, and then set up bots, uh, friendly, no, we won't, don't want any friendly bots, actually. Oh, for God's sake, this is terrible UI. All right, let's do a three, 
three enemy bots in at recruit level. Um, all right, then create a class. What do we have? We have an MTAR, an MP7, an MK48. Yeah, this is basically every type of weapon we're using. All right. God, I don't hear any sound, by the way. I don't know if you guys are hearing any sound of this, but I'm definitely not. Um, old games running on new hardware. My God. Beautiful. The nostalgia is hitting me. It's hitting me. <laughs> oh, God. Why does it take so long to... Oh, Prodox is loading up a server, I, I reckon. Oof, running at that 144 frames. That might be screen limited, maybe. Um, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. This low pixelated... Okay, so, as you can see, there's already a few things that are quite interesting to know here. When I start moving, my crosshair increases in size. And when I stand still, it decreases in size again, kind of indicating, hey, if you shoot whilst moving, your spread is going to increase. Kind of like focusing on that skill and like realism kind of like section, um, which is, you know, uh, if you move around in real life and try to shoot, then, you know, that is going to be a lot more difficult to do than when you're standing still and shooting. Now, one of the things that is important to note here is that this gun is shit, by the way. Uh, oh, there, there was one guy there. Um, is that the, all of the shots feel very real, very... Oh, it's... it's uh, you have to toggle the aim. Where did that guy go? There we go. Um, there was a few... Um, what's it called? There's a few hit markers, and I kind of wish I could show it in a slower pace, but this game was very fast-paced. Come on. There we go. But the hit marker itself doesn't actually change, right? So this is a much older game, um, but the hit marker doesn't change. It did just show in a kill feed that it was a headshot, but beyond that, it didn't do very much. Um, oh, where is he? Oh, there he is. It was totally not where I thought it was. Uh, oh, there we go. Um, then there's the, obviously the vignette. Uh, the border around the screen that turns into blood the more you get shot. Uh, kind of indicating to you how much health you have, because as you might have noticed, there's no health bar on screen. Um, so it's another one of those things that, you know, if you want to go towards something more realistic or something more, you know, skill-based, then maybe not having health bars could work, right? It could. Um, let me click that away. Um, so that could totally work. Now let me just um, let me just. Is there another enemy here that I can shoot? Everything is toggle based, and I don't love it. Um, now I can't actually change my class. I think by pressing anything. No, I think I just do my grenade and kind of step on top of it. Oh, friendly fire is off. Oh, for God's sake! All right, uh, here we go. Shoot me. Yep, almost there, buddy. There we go. <laughs> Took him a few, uh, a few uh, thingies, but oh yeah, okay. All right, can I die again, please? I took him a few bullets. Hello, I'm here. I should have not put these guys at recruit. Stop running away. I'm literally right here. Man, bot AI from 2012. Amazing. Now. I've got a much, much smaller gun. Um, you can see that the actual iron sights of the gun itself also form the reticle, uh, which you can learn to cross here, which is really, really nice in my opinion. Uh, and the recoil is much, much less than a smaller gun uh, as it rapid fires into the uh, enemy's head, basically. Uh, now, I believe I can pick up, oh, I can pick up the big gun Again, iron sights on the gun model actually represent also the uh, crosshair. There is quite a bit of spread, not a lot of recoil, I must admit. I, I thought I remembered this differently, but um, yeah. There's a, and there's a single fire. Again, we see a lot more flashiness. We see a lot more uh, uh, moving in the player's view. Um, but also if we swap to the vector, for example, <sighs> the vector is by no means a distance gun, but 
it does have a lot more of that recoil. Look at that. Fires a lot quicker. Also has a lot more recoil. Jesus, I barely hit that. Uh, how do I do my kill streak again? Oh no, now I'm typing in, in the team chat. Aha! <laughs> God. It's amazing how little you remember on certain things. Uh, pistols, same deal. The iron sights on the gun actually uh, also create the crosshair. Um, and again, there is hit markers, there are specific sounds for hitting a person. Uh, there we go. Uh, so it's it's relatively well communicated, but this is kind of where this is not necessarily where it started, but this is definitely one of the oof, one of the forefathers of kind of like really looking into how we can give more feedback and how we can do more towards uh, players, basically. Uh, now there's a few more things. Let's do shotguns. Uh, shotguns are similarly uh, created in a way to create a lot of impact. Hello. Um, being one-shotters and essentially nothing else. If you try to shoot them from any other distance, you will fail. Especially with the Remington, but uh, either way, I think this will be the case. See, it'll be either missing or lots of hit markers and kind of like taking some time. Now, if these guys weren't bots, then, you know, obviously I would have been destroyed already. Because people that still play COD Black Ops 2 nowadays are going to be incredibly good. Um, but yeah. Uh, so that's uh, another change, uh, but it is a very satisfying gun to play with, obviously, because you know if you do run into someone all of a sudden, then uh, this is the perfect answer to that. Then we'll just look at snipers, and then we'll be almost done, essentially. All right, let's respawn. Now snipers, they take a little bit of time to zoom in on, uh, but look at that, the satisfaction on such a shot. Uh, I'm just going to pretend that all of my sniper gameplay was exactly like that just now. Uh, but what you'll also see is a slight swaying, right? The slight swaying where... Whoop, um, oh. <laughs> the slight uh, slight swaying because, you know, you're breathing whilst you're holding these guns. Again, it's more towards that realism, more towards that skill uh, uh, kind of uh, um, technique uh, rather than... Uh, oops. Oops, I promise I'm good, there we go. Uh, rather than uh, making something that is entirely more focused on just feeling cool, right? This has got to be a skill thing, basically. Also because, you know, this is multiplayer, uh, you don't really want to introduce a whole lot of snapping in multiplayer because it's just going to make people feel like they got cheated out of a kill, essentially. Um, so that's not what you want to do. Um... Now there's one more thing about the sniper rifle that we saw in the previous games as well, which is that when we shoot, we see this little white line happening just below the shot to kind of indicate where the bullet went. Without that, it would feel a lot less impactful and it will also take away a lot of information from the player of where they've shot and why they might have potentially missed, uh, rather than just saying, basically not granting the kill and, and, and saying they've missed. Uh, we show where the shot was actually impacted which is quite nice. Um, oh, shit. Okay. That's a shame. Um, and so with that, you know, we kind of come to a conclusion on where is all this kind of like started and where am I like drawing my main inspiration from to, you know, modern day examples and everything that you can do surrounding controls, surrounding feelings of impact and surrounding audiovisual feedback when it comes to uh, satisfying um, gunplay. Uh, like that shot just now, for example, it was entirely skill-based, it felt incredible, um, and also it, it told me enough about it, basically. Um, so he was using a target finder, didn't you? Um, oops. So yeah, uh, satisfying gunplay. There you go. That's the start. I would, I would uh, uh, say. There's a few more advanced techniques in there that are definitely gonna take a lot more practice. Wow, look at this. Final game kill cam. <laughs> uh, or final kill cam of the game. Incredible. Um, that's the highest KD rate you I've ever had. Amazing. Um, 
you know, with that, uh, um, I hope that I've given a little bit more insight in a skill shot. Thanks. Um, in uh, how you create, you know, a really satisfying gunplay uh, through many different ways, essentially. Um, looks like my room is unrendered on this side. It looks like it's just like, it's just the shadows haven't baked correctly. Um, amazing. Um, amazing. Um, and uh, I hope that this also allows you to, to do something else. So besides gunplay, every game, every single game, um, well, every single game with a little bit of quality, and that has been received somewhat well. It's not the pink texture smith. That'd be kind of funny, though. I might make my wallpaper. Like, if I ever get wallpaper, I might make it that, like, the, the wall is missing its texture. That'd be actually very funny. I think you'll also get tired of it after about a week, but I think it would be funny. Um, uh, I hope I hope that this brings something else more than just how to make satisfying gunplay, which is that every game with a little bit of quality and that was received in some positive light, or even games that you know uh, uh, were received very negatively, that on both sides, on the good reception side, there's a lot of systems and there's a lot of choices and considerations that have been made to make a game more interesting or, or easy to play or more accessible or you know, uh, any one of those things and, and many other things, um, which really, if you want to design games, if you want to be a game designer and ultimately a game developer, um, that you need to start considering, you need to change your mindset from, oh, it's a roguelike and, you know, uh, uh, um, it's kind of like Slate Aspire to really go like, okay, it's a roguelike, but what is it truly doing? What is every system truly doing from the audio visual feedback that's giving you to some of the consideration that might be behind that. This is always a guessing game, right? Unless there's like some published uh, article or video on why they made certain choices. Um, but it's always gonna be a bit of a guessing game on why they made the choices. But at least start thinking about it. Start thinking to yourself, why have these developers chosen to integrate this system, not only to integrate it, but also in this way, right? With all of its little parts, really start analyzing. And as soon as you start doing that, uh, for multiple different games, for games you love and for games you hate, you're gonna find so much inspiration and so much um, uh, 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 new knowledge that you might have not previously thought about that you can then apply to your own games, right? Because ultimately, making games is about learning from games in the past, right? What have other people done that either you want to do but do better or that you don't want to do at all, right? That's what game is really about, and if you can do that by taking some of these systems, and even in games like Overwatch 2, where you know it's super recent, and 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 you know people might either love it or hate it, uh, that you can go in and kind of like go into a practice range and really dissect what each character is doing and what their guns are doing and, and what these systems are doing and how the UI is working and all that kind of stuff. So, I really really hope that that is something, some consideration that you might take away from this stream or this video if you're watching it as a video, if I if I actually made it through and, <laughs> and uploaded it as a video. Uh, because ultimately, that is gonna be important because then it's no longer about how to make satisfying gunplay, then it's about how to make satisfying systems. And once you start to understand that, creating those systems together in a sort of harmony, which obviously takes a lot of practice and, and you know, uh, I'm trying, um, but once you're doing that, that's when you really enable yourself to make quite incredible games, or at least give yourself the opportunity to create incredible games. Um, so please, do that. Um, like, you, you can watch Thomas Rush videos all day long if you want to, uh, but you're not gonna learn anything from that, full stop. <laughs> um, you're much better off, you know, picking up a game, preferably one uh, you actually don't enjoy playing, uh, and then going through it, analyzing those systems, figuring out why they might have done certain things. Uh, you can do this for games that you love too, but I feel, I always find that if I do it on a game I love, I just gonna I'm just gonna end up playing that game rather than actually doing the analyzing. So, you know, uh, it, ta it takes more focus that way. Anyway, that's that video. Uh, thank you for watching the video. Um, on the stream, we're gonna continue a little longer, uh, perhaps, and uh, but for now the video is over. So subscribe, like, whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want me to talk about more, then uh, leave a comment and tell me, talk about this thing, please. And then I'll, I'll take a look and see if I can do that. Um, 
And I think that's everything. All right, video's over. Bye.